Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destinies show. Why is this show called this, you may ask, so I'll tell you. The accepted meaning of angel is messenger and the accepted meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray and I love to help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future and transform their present so they can take charge of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use future life progression, past life regression, uh, meditation, angel cards, angelic crake and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And also I've created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of this show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, Graham Baker, who'll be sharing his story of pain, passion and purpose. Now, Graham looks at life from an everyman perspective. As a serving police officer, Graham was happy and enjoying his work. He certainly wasn't thinking about starting a photography business, but in 2009, everything changed. From the pain of loss to using his passion for photography as a coping mechanism to eventually changing direction and finding purpose of helping others and be close to his family. Graham continues to operate his photography business and coaching individuals and feels more confident in front of the camera, but is also an ambassador for the men's mental health and bereavement charity, Strong Men. Now, with reviews such as, over the years I've worked with many photographers, yet Graham is exceptional truly professional with great results and effective editing. As a performer, I know how stressful headshot, headshot sessions can be, but with Graham, it was a breeze. I can see now why he's always so busy. And had an amazing professional branding shoot with Graham. Fantastic pictures and great tips on how to boost my florist business. Highly recommended as, as well, as I would absolutely no hesitation in recommending Graham with the host of skills he harnesses. A recent one-to-one -one with Graham set me homework to me gain more confidence in videoing myself. A true gent and social media guru. Nothing is too much. So without further delay, hello Graham and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Yeah, I'm very good. Thanks for uh, having me on. I'm uh, quite excited to uh, see where this goes. Yeah, good. Thank Brilliant. You. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts as both Graham and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So Graham, why don't you tell us about your journey and how you went from pain to passion to purpose? Wow, it's uh, <laughs> that's that's the, the the million dollar question, isn't it? So I, I guess I'll kind of start where life changed for me, which was in 2009. So just very briefly, I was um, serving police officer uh, in South East London Borough. Um, at that time would have been probably oh hang on i can't even think now probably eight eight seven seven years i've been i've been in the mm. job by that time quite happy i'd been going for my promotion i'd done my sergeant's exam the year before um and i was uh, acting up as a sergeant on team as well as i was about to take over what's called the street duties course as a, as a an acting sergeant to sort of like mentor and train up new officers um also at that time we were ex my wife and i were expecting our second child scarlet um to cut a long story short um there's a lot more in depth that i could go on to but conscious that maybe it's a it's not exactly a subject that's uh uh easy for some people but we lost yes. our baby daughter at childbirth on in 2009 in december um, there was no indication of any problems. It was a case of just uh, everything was fine. Went through the whole pregnancy. Everything was good. Woke up in the morning. Yep, baby's coming. Excellent. Got down to the hospital. And then at that point, it was bang, no heartbeat. Um, didn't, did, you know, went into shock mode. I, I mean, there's bits of it that I can remember and bits of it that kind of I can't. Um, but in short, the complication was uh, some knots in her um, in her cord. Very, very rare. And um, 
yeah, that was that. There wasn't anything anybody could have done. It's the sort of thing that's not doesn't actually show up on any scans. So it's an, it's impossible to actually predict that of actually happening. So she was full term, and then obviously born sleeping, as as they often say. So obviously that kind of just was like this huge, uh, I don't know, sort of a, a kick um, into touch, into reality, whatever way you want to call it. Um, so it was tough. It was a tough time. And, you know, I had some counselling, bereavement counselling. We got um, involved with um, the charity Sands, which were good. I mean, don't get me wrong, but I didn't, I think it was that, I guess, a little bit of the police. It was that macho man attitude of um, uh, sort of, you know, we're dealing with grief. There's no instruction manual for dealing with yeah. grief. Uh, especially a child or a baby, it, it's, it's just, it, do, it doesn't exist. So the help is is kind of sporadic. Yes, sounds were great. I didn't get much from it. I didn't feel that it was very much more geared towards the woman, the female, which is, uh, yeah. don't get me wrong, there's, there's, I've got no issue with that whatsoever. But I felt a little bit uncomfortable doing some of the group sessions and stuff like that. It didn't really um, resonate with me um so that was that i had my counseling and then you know the usual rubber stamp yeah you're fit back to work and um so it carried on and um but at that time as well i think one of the things that i sort of took up although i'd always been into photography the one of the things that really kind of helped me through some of the processes was photography i, I, I had always had an interest in it and actually it was through the sands charity that we met another couple who lost their baby daughter roughly about the same time mm. and um amanda and she was a photographer at the time and you know through conversation she said i understand you're interested in photography do you want to come and help me out at a wedding sometime and i went sure why not sounds interesting and that was that that was that helping out at that one wedding I just found this kind of outlet that just kind of, I don't know, it just pulled me out of a dark place. And I just found this way of spending time with people and sharing something that's so, you know, a wedding is just, you know, yes. potentially that they're, they're one of the best days of their lives. And, and you just got all, you know, sort of, um, not eaten up, but you just sort of got kind of wrapped up into all that atmosphere. And I just loved it. Absolutely loved it. And being a bloke, you know, photography, lots of equipment, lots of gear, <laughs> of the gig, you know, and, and that was it. It literally, I didn't want to start a business. I didn't want to do anything with it. I just wanted to do it for myself. And um, But what happened was I then helped her at a few more weddings and I thought, well, actually, I'll give it a go. And then I did a wedding on my own and then it literally people started asking me to take pictures of stuff and it just all, it grew organically. It wasn't a right, I'm going to build a business. It just, one day I woke up and I thought, oh, crikey, I actually better tell the tax man I've got, <laughs> I've got a business. <laughs> and so at that point, it was born. The, the, the business, well, for fair choice of words, but that's that's what it was. And I guess I think over the the next 10 years, I think that gave me a lot of comfort because it was, it was and again, I can't think of a, a better word, but it was born from, something so tragic that I do take a lot of comfort that it was something so wonderful has come from it, something that I love and, you know, I'm really passionate about. I hate saying that, by the way, but it's true. I, I just love, and, but actually sort of digging deeper, it's not necessarily the photography, it's the people. Mm -hmm. It's That's what I get off on, if you pardon the expression, but, that, <laughs> but that's what it is. It's that it's that connection with people it's that interaction with people it's seeing uh, and the power of photography and memories and visuals that 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 sort of you know um ability to be uh, uh what's the word um, intrinsic in someone's life you know that you know that i've created something for somebody that's going to go on for generations and generations. You know, I will take those wedding photographs and hopefully those those couples will stay together and they'll have children, and they'll have children, and, have children. and they can look back at those photographs that I took maybe 20, 30, 50, 100 years from now 
Yeah. It's something that is, is very powerful. And, and I, I take a lot of comfort from that. But it's that, it's that connection with people, I think, is, is what drives it. Not, yeah, the kit, I love it. I'm, I'm a bit of a gearhead. But at the same time, it's more to do with people. And that's why I don't think I, um, I'm not into uh, landscape photography. And, mm. and, and, and although I do some product photography work, it's not what drives me. It's the people. It's, I like spending time with other people and learning about themselves and helping them get comfortable in front of the camera. Because it, 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 I see it all the time, you know, from when I was doing family photography, you know, when, when mums wanted pictures of their kids, but then they wouldn't want to be in the picture themselves. And, and I would always say, look, you want to be in the pictures because I know you might not like it yourself, but who's it for? It's not for you. It's for your children, your children's children. You need to be in those pictures. So it was then I found myself not coaching as such, but I would be helping people relax and get in front of the camera. And then it kind of went on for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so if we if we were to go um, back um, to, uh, I mean, how did you find counselling? I mean, did you want to do counselling or were you dragged to counselling or was it just something that, that organically naturally happened um well it happened anyway because i was in the police and that's what they said i had to do it wasn't a case of yeah you've been through a very traumatic time the police are going to be nice and give you six sessions of counseling and i i understood the value of it i didn't necessarily get a nut well I think it was once I started doing it, it was very cathartic. It was very, it was very helpful. Um, and and I, I even remember very clearly the first session that I had and I started talking to the, to the counselor and, and she said, you are very, very sad. It, but in, in, you know, she could sense all this pain and, and, and bereavement and all the rest of it. And then obviously six sessions later, it was, I was in a different place, but, I think it was that case of almost, and, and this is nothing against the the, the, the police or the, the way that they do things or not, but it's not enough. Yeah. It's not enough. I think, you know, that, that needed to continue for a lot longer. So it was almost that it was, it got to me a, a point that I was able to function. Um, but then you've got that, I call it the stiff upper lip attitude, you know, that, I'm a man, I need to be tough, I need to be strong for my family, everyone else is crumbling around me. And I, I guess that's part of my makeup anyway. Yeah. I've always been the one that's, you know, if anyone in the family is going to do well, it's going to be Graham. He's always going to be the success story. And, you know, so I had this kind of image to uphold as being the tough guy and not, not tough guy, tough guy, but just yeah. strong. So it was kind of six sessions, shelved, move on. I mean, obviously, it was still a long process and all the rest of it, but um yeah so i think there was a lot of st unresolved stuff uh which came out again in well nine years later so yeah yeah this was the next part was part two of the story yeah I suppose. yeah, yeah uh, exactly and i think sometimes that's that's what happens isn't it in in life we kind of like we we think we've dealt with one issue and we just go through life and then something will hit us and we're like oh okay maybe we haven't quite but then something yeah. comes in to help us explore that and, and move and move through that yeah and, and and that's what happened to me um well it was would have been december let's get my years right 2018 i i really started to notice that i wasn't quite right um i think no one specific catalyst for it combination of many things uh, workload in the place, you know, the cutbacks, the morale in general was, was pretty low. Um, constantly being asked to do more for less, um, more pressure. There were a couple of characters that, um, I'm not going to go into detail, but let, let's just say that didn't particularly get on very well with, and that didn't help matters. And, um, so that went on for a few months and then and then what i do remember is i i put a did a job on an address <clears throat> it was my job and i again i don't want to go too much details but normally i mean you you may well remember this but it was that 
elation that you would get. You should have gone in there and think, yeah, and it was, it was a fantastic job. You know, we had a lot of stuff that we found that was naughty stuff that shouldn't have been there. And by all accounts, it was very, very good, very positive. But I just remember very specifically thinking to myself, I don't feel anything. I didn't feel a sense of pride. I didn't feel a sense of achievement. I just felt nothing. I just felt like, yeah, whatever, going through the motions. And then that was obviously a warning sign, but I didn't really take any notice. I just sort of thought I was just annoyed, fed up with work. Went through Christmas, which was okay. And then January, February time, that was it. So 2019, I literally, I just sort of I remember it quite clearly. I just woke up one morning and I couldn't get out of bed. I just didn't want to do anything. I'd lost all sense of purpose. I had no drive, no nothing. And, but it wasn't anger. It wasn't, it was just nothing. It was just nothing there. And um, so, you know, went to the doctors. Yes, you are. Went through the process. You are depressed. And, you know, antidepressants uh, were subscribed and prescribed and um yeah went from there and uh, yeah i wasn't i wasn't in a good place at all really <laughs> um but then um come april the that year um i was i guess i guess a fan i used to be in the territorial army a long time ago when I was fit and young and all the rest of it, and I loved it. So I, 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 I quite what I like those sorts of programs on the TV. So TV program who dare, uh, SAS who dares wins. Yeah. And I think it was I can't remember which series it was now, but I remember just finding it really interesting, really fascinating, and it was something that I kind of resonated with. So I followed the the, the people on it in on social media, and then. Um, I, know, I saw this post by chance one day about this new charity that some of the contestants were putting together as called Strongmen. And I thought, yeah, what's that all about? Looked into it. And he just said this a charity for men who had suffered some bereavement, didn't deal with it properly, or had mental anxiety issues or depression or mental health issues as a result of dealing with... Yeah. Uh, bereavement so I was like oh I don't know I don't know I'm not I was you know put at that point I was probably three stone heavier than maybe about two stone heavier at the moment because I put in a little you know a couple of little but I was overweight I was unhealthy and, and and all the rest of it and I just didn't fancy the idea but then Sam my wife said do it do it you need to do something so I signed up and I was picked to go on this uh, I guess to make it simple for people to understand, uh, like a weekend retreat, if you like. But it wasn't. Um, <laughs> it wasn't woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't mean that in a in a in a sort of disrespectful way or, or about counselling or, or coaching or anything like that. What was being spiritual? And I'll get onto that. Yeah, it was, was just the type of retreat that I'd be running. No. No, yeah. it was it was a blokey thing. It was basically, yeah. and, and the premise was, we are just going to rock up at this place. It was a campsite in Snowdonia. We're going to walk to the top of, or climb to the top of Snowdon, and then the next day we're going to do something fun. That was that's it. That was the brief. You didn't really know anything more than that. For someone who I was like that, I was to actually get in the car and drive all that way was big enough in itself. Cause I, 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 there was a few times where I literally even went round a couple of the, you know, come off at service stations and you can come back round yeah. and go back. There was a few times that I did that, but I just, something just sort of went, no, I'm going to turn up. And anyway, we've, I've turned up on this Friday night in the middle of Wales, um, a bunch of strangers. I mean, I reckon there was a couple of, people that i recognize from the tv show yeah and you know i was a little starstruck and all the rest of it but it was very very strange it was this whole feeling of it was almost tense because nobody knew what to do and it was just all these guys all blokes from different backgrounds you know, different ages different stories different you know it wasn't just children it was partners parents all sorts didn't matter it wasn't the point and the next day we got up and we walked up 
but climbed up snowed came back down and i'm really really brushing over this yeah yeah but as simple as that sounds that was the biggest reset that i've had ever since all of this happened it was this kind of wake up call it was the the space it was being out in the fresh air it was being in the company of people that got it that mm -hmm. understood it there was no judgment there was no pressure to talk you didn't have to speak about anything you could talk you know, like usual bloke stuff talk about the football talk about the it didn't matter why you were there it was just the fact that you were there and everybody around you got it yeah and that whole process of climbing up to the top of snowden and coming back down again and there was some proper squeaky bum bits because we went along the knife edge and if you know snowdonia and stuff it's it's you know it can be a little bit and there was snow up there as well so it was but it was that whole common purpose i think that brought us all together and then the next day we went to this um i forget what it's called like zip weld it's this big quarry and we did this mile long zip i think so quite blokey adrenaline adrenaline kind of thing but that weekend uh just it just kind it was just like having this feeling of do you know what i'm not alone yeah. there's there's lots of people out there that feel this way lots of people are struggling lots of people are having a rough time of it and then when you hear some of the stories of some of the other guys you, you and it was actually i'll make a point of that it's, it wasn't a competition it's not like a oh well you lost the baby but i lost this it, it, yeah it, it, it didn't matter there was none of that at all and it was just about loss and connection and community and then you know we've continued to grow ever since you know this that the, the guys that went on that first weekend we we don't even call ourselves friends we call ourselves brothers we're you know we're our strong men brothers and and we have a support group behind it and you know if we're feeling a bit down there's always someone to call there's always someone to to rely on there's always someone that understand and you, you know i i did it quite a lot um was that a lot but i did it a few times throughout the, the whole darker days of the lockdown where you just thought well i haven't spoken to someone for a while and i'll just bring them up and, and just had a conversation about any old crap but yeah. it was it, it, and that immediately kind of got me back on track so that that's that kind of journey i guess from the pain of losing Scarlett and the passion of photography and then this huge reset to what happened to me in April last year that just I, I think I'm still buzzing from it and, and I, I know that seems really strange but I just absolutely on a high and nothing seems to face me at the moment <laughs> you've got all sorts of crazy stuff going on in the world and it's really really tragic and really bad and but it, a lot of it just sort of washes over me in a sense that and, and again I, I have to be careful because i don't want people to think that i don't care because i do but it's this um ability to not get wound up and not over be subjective with it i can remain objective and remain remain rational with all this stuff that's going on and i've got this purpose of just well not purpose is the wrong word but just a, a sense of a way of being able to control what i think about the world so yes that whole, i'm in control of my own emotions my reactions to what's going on and i think that's a kind of a cool place to be mindset wise i think i'm i mean we'll have good days and bad days don't get me wrong but i certainly haven't actually and this is going to sound wrong as well i haven't actually minded the the, the the lockdown it hasn't really upset me as it has as many other people and i've got stuff i've got tough stuff i've got you know my mum's a two-hour drive away my sister's two hours away and she's she's high risk has very serious preconditions as well very very difficult around that but again i just well i can't i can't do anything about that i can you know but at the same time it's, it's hard but i just I feel yeah. in control. Yeah, which, which 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 is an absolutely a um, brilliant, brilliant place to be, and you know it's something that you know more people um, are tending to, and I and I, th and I think this is what lockdowns done. It's kind of like a lot more people are now more in control of 
their lives, their emotions with, with what they're doing. They're not um, sort of like being led by other people and other people's emotions. They've kind of like had the time to actually, actually, this is my life, you know, how I want it to be, how I want to perceive the world, how I want people to perceive me. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. I think I've become so much more comfortable. It not comes to my own skin. I think, well, partially that I think I had become uncomfortable, but now I'm back to where I should. It was, it was somebody said to me, oh, you're a different person. I went, no, I'm not a different person. I'm the person that I'm supposed to be. And, and that was that was part of this reset. I don't think that I'm different. I am who I am meant to be. I had become someone that I hadn't. I didn't mean to be. If that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. Make, make, yeah. Make, makes absolute sense. You know. And the fact that there was there was there was something that that helped you. Um, you know, strong men is such a brilliant. Um, uh, organization in in the fact that because I think a lot of men even in today's age still have that kind of as you said stiff up a lip kind of like you know I'm 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 going to I'm, I'm going to deal with my own way or not or not deal with it but to actually have a support network where you can where you can actually go actually there are others who've got the same things or similar to me and I can actually just be myself with them I think it's absolutely brilliant that that it came about and that you're you know and you're an ambassador for it as well which is absolutely brilliant yeah I, I mean everybody went on that first weekend were literally invited to become ambassadors for it and um yeah you're right I think it's that whole it, it's not it's not woo woo, but it is. It, it it's become more woo woo. That's the uh, expression. Is that oh, Jason Moody? I know Jason. Good yeah. man. Yeah, evening, Graham and Sam. But it, it's. Um, I think it was just coming to. I think it's that that ability to just be myself and be accepted. Not not because I cared about what other people thought of me, but it was my in my own self that stiff upper lip and strong. I I can now. I am comfortable. To be vulnerable in front of people but i know that i'm still strong and i think that's the difference between stiff upper lip attitude is no no i'm going to carry on regardless but i'm in pain inside i can still be strong but i can actually say Do you know what i have i have some rough times too and and you know i've and, and what and again it's it's led on to other things that have happened you know a friend of mine from norfolk encouraged me to apply for doing a tedx so i thought and at that point in time i was like yeah well i'll just i'll just take anything on not really thinking about it <laughs> i did it and then i got accepted so um unfortunately everything's on hold with that at the moment um but again it was it was just very much about telling my story in the and i guess where my attitude not attitude where i think now is that i've mm. i've become very much more about helping others in the same situation or helping people in general and I think that that's really cathartic. Um, so I said, you know, if, if I stand up in a room full of 400 people and tell my story and be watched by millions of people on the internet, like TEDx does, now I'm putting pressure on myself. You got plenty it, it of was, Yeah. <laughs> but it was, it was more the fact that if I, if just one person in that audience goes, do you know what? That, that sounds like me or that resonates with me. And I can now see that there is a way through this chaos of being depressed or whatever it is that you're suffering from, that there are ways through it and, and you can open up to people and, and talk to people and not feel like um, a wet blanket about it. And I think that's, that's the point. So that was kind of why I did that as well. And it's, it's just kind of snowballed into this thing of, where I'm just helping people all the time. You know, I've, I do a lot of um, networking, business networking. And I, I literally, you know, when the lockdown happened, I thought, well, I can't really get out and do this and can't do that. So I started uh, um, helping people. You know, people were, were struggling because their business is very hands-on, like a, an osteopath, for one example. And uh, I said, well, let's do a video. Let's do an interview. Let's, let's do something so you're all visible and you can tell your your clients that you are still there and you're still behind and you're still calling them so i did that and and again that was really cathartic as well i was getting i was getting probably just as much from it by helping somebody else and 
and then again that's led on to other things you know with, yeah. although the photography and and videography i guess i'm not a videographer as such but i do video um I've, there's some great videographers out there that i know and i'm friends with um but what i notice a lot of is and it's something that really not bugs me but there's a lot of amazing people out there a lot of amazing businesses a lot of amazing individuals but they are for whatever reasons they might have don't feel that they can step out of their comfort zones they don't feel that they can step up and take their business to the next level or whatever it might be that whatever drives them so I've, I've kind of found myself and i wouldn't call myself a coach by any stretch of the imagination because it's not something that have, but when you're trying to help someone with their photography or take their photograph if, you know you want to help them be the best that they can be and if they're nervous or scared or they don't have very much confidence about being in front of the camera then there's things that you know i can do to help people do that to overcome those fears because it's, it's what it's all about really mm. so i'm really enjoying that kind of stuff um yeah Cause, cause it's, be, because it's, it's, it's not just um you, you know you helping with the photography and that you are literally helping people with um their social media side their websites um yeah. videos lighting you know you kind of like it's kind of like snowballed into this mass massive thing now where you're sort of like putting together programs yeah it, it's weird because it, it's not something again it, i guess it's me all over i i didn't set out to create a podcast i didn't set out to create a training program but that's what i've done or that's what i'm in the process of doing you know i've i've, I've I've done the interviews. I've been recording them through Zoom, and I've got the. Uh, they're all on YouTube at the moment, <clears throat> but I'm stripping out the audio, creating a standalone podcast. And and again, I it could have been about photography. It could have been about this or the, but I wanted it to be about people with purpose. You know, where people have struggled through the lockdown, or just in general, what what is it their story? What's what's driven that person to from a non-business person to a business person or um why did dan and ephraim set up this charity what was it that drove them because they had a purpose and a sense of purpose and and that's what i that's kind of what the focus of the um podcast is going to be about it's, it's about finding finding your purpose it's for people with a purpose about people that have purpose and it's, it's it's all about that i know there's lots of podcasts out there very similar to it but i felt that it was something that i wanted to do for not only for me but it helped out a lot of other people as well because it was keeping their businesses visible during a time when they couldn't actually run their businesses properly so that's where it kind of was born um, and then the coaching stuff i don't want to call it coaching because it's not it's it's more about empowering that, people yeah it, i think i think my purpose is about you know what i want to do what i want to impact is i love i fell in love with doing business i fell in love with the whole idea of people following their dreams and being able to take something and give it back to the community in whatever way or shape or form they were you know, studying at college for years to become an osteopath or an accountant or whatever these people work really damned hard for that but what was what the sad bit about it is, is that sometimes there are people out there doing a pardon the expression, a crap job that are just because they're good at social media or they're good at marketing, they're good at putting themselves out there, they're shadowing these great, great people. Mm. And and, and I, I just feel that for me, I feel strong about that. I want to see these people that I know have got real purpose and real heart and the real, you know real strength and something to share with the world and i want to help them do that and get paid <laughs> yeah but but you know i have to i've got i've got to pay the bills and, and, well, and all the rest of it. but it was it, that that's the purpose it's this i want to get people out from behind themselves or their business or whatever it is and in front of it and and that obviously involves a lot of coaching a lot yeah. of stuff so a lot of people are taking up video you know video is huge at the minute social media it's you know all the gurus tell us video going live and all the rest of that you do it i um, mean a lot of there's a lot of great people out there that are fearful of it mm. um you know i know some really very confident people could go into a room and talk to a room of strangers put a 
put them in front of a camera and they're yeah. like, it's a completely different thing. So I've, that's why I've set up this little, I guess, cohort or training program, if you like. I, I don't know. It may not even happen. But it's, I'm, I'm going with a group of people at the moment. I'm calling it my beta test. And so far, the feedback has been brilliant. And, and I've already seen a change in people's and it, it's it, what's great. It's not just, it's almost the video is a side thing. It, it's that's on the side. It's just something, you know, a, a byproduct of this process that I'm helping people with. And I think that's what I get a lot out of that. I do get a lot out of that. And it's seeing this change where, you know, there were some things that are going on in the group today. And it was the first time some people had done, done certain things. And, and you could just feel this vibe that they were going, oh, my goodness, I've never, if you'd asked me that two weeks ago, there's just no way that I would have even considered doing that. And, you know, and just little things like that, stuff that I've learned over the years. And, you know, call it what you like. I call it helping people with photography and video. That's what I call it. But Yeah, helping them with their social media. Helping with social media, yeah. It's that, you know. So, I mean, the idea from a business perspective, from my perspective too, Earn money would be to create a, a, a complete package for social media and imagery and, and visibility for a business. So, if, for example, you, we've done photo shoots. So it's yeah, like, yeah. That, that, that's what I would recommend Graham because he, oh, you saw any of my publicity photos? Graham took those. My website, Graham took all those. <laughs> Thank you very much. But that, I think there's a lot of photographers out there, a lot of businesses out there that will go um uh, here's your photographs great photograph they look fantastic here they are thanks very much i'm going on to my next client um whereas i see it a little bit more of a, an organic um supportive role so it's more about well right, here's your photographs but here's this podcast here's the transcript from that podcast here's the um i'm not i'm not going to produce all of this myself but i'm going to create the the platform for it to be made you know i haven't got time to create editorials and stuff like that i would you know it, it's about here's your blog post here's how you can then break that up into smaller chunks and here's your the next three months worth of posts or if i work with um uh, a um a social media agency for example and they say we've got this client who wants us to do social media for it, but they've got no images or they've got no we need something to start with so i'm I want a bit. It's much more of a hands-on approach, and much more yeah. of a touchy-feely sort of support, rather than I'm a photographer. There's your pictures. Yeah, it's, it's about that follow-up support. That a lot of people that I work with, I, I do tend to find that the the wellness industry. I I, I do find that a certain attraction. Maybe that's because of the charity work. Mm. Uh, and in fact, there's a little something I'm going to talk about very quickly at the end. But um. <clears throat> absolutely fantastic at what they do confident love their job love what they're doing ask them how to upload a picture to facebook to the right dimensions and uh, i'd be just as well to speak in in martian and, and and i think that that's you know and i see that as a disservice i think well if i my pictures that i've worked hard to create end up on a crap website or a facebook page that doesn't nobody pays any attention to what's the point you know, so it's more about giving a bit more support around it, more, more yeah. sort of helping people become more confident with some of it. And I know there's there's some great trainers out there, some great services out there. There's people out there that train how to people to use LinkedIn and excuse me, Facebook and all those different platforms. I'm not going to go in depth, but I'm going to give people enough um, actionable tools to yeah. get people going. And I, yeah. I will recommend people. I know there's some very good LinkedIn trainers that I'd say, look, I can take you so far. I can help you and help you. But now you, now you need to take it to the next level and then go and speak to this person. I'm, I'm, that's what I'm about. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, um, when you know, when when you first kind of said social media thing, you know, and you uh, and you kind of like gave us advice about Google reviews. Yeah, and that you know, oh yeah. Actually, I'm talking of that. I do need to add a couple of things to that one. <laughs> but it's, but it's, again, that that's really powerful stuff. And 
you know, again, lots of people don't know about it or they know about it, but they're, they're too, I don't want to say frightened because that makes people sound that they're not. They're, they're apprehensive about using it because they don't yeah. know how to do it or what it will entail. Yeah, I think I think what I'm, I, I like to do is to just help people just pass that little comfort zone line. So here's the line. I'm not, I'm not taking people up here. I'm taking people just a little bit here, just pushing someone, gently guiding someone, just step out of the side. So they go, oh, I could do that. Right, off you go, carry on. I'm always here if you need a call, but you can, you've can. you already proven, it's that, um, there's a, a, always a little further, it's a, it's a hashtag. One of these SAS guys did it. Yeah. And it's about reaching, and uh, at Middleton, he talks a lot about it in his in his in his book about you, you sort of get through this little step and this this fear bubble if you like so you just push through that and you think okay i did it that time so now you know you bank it you go well i know i can get there i can push a little tiny bit further and i'm just i'm just sort of want to help people realize that so then they can then start doing it themselves i don't want to handhold people all the way because no. i'm only one person but if I can say, right, I can help you for the next few weeks, get you on your way, get you confident, by all means come back or book a one to one with me, which would be different. But I, again, I do that. You know, people will ask me for some one to ones. And I just it, it's, it's almost like I don't want to I don't want to be a coach, but that's what it feels like sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But but then it, it's kind of like it doesn't mean that you're you're going to be the um, coach coach all the time. It'll just be something that that you'll be um, going going in and out of, because I can imagine that once um, weddings start taking place again, you're going to be because I, I know before lockdown, you were really busy. I'm um, trying to get yeah. hold of you if anything was. It's it's yeah it's going to be it's going to be an interesting few years when it comes to that side of things. I think it's uh, there's still a lot of fear around it. Um, I just have to wait and see. I so I have taken bookings during the lockdown. People still people still going to get married, but I think it yeah. might change the industry. Yeah, it's going to change the industry a little bit. Uh, yeah, but, but, I, but I think every industry is um, is is going to be changing. Yeah, definitely. Well, the photo the, the whole visual industry is changing all the time and i think video is going to be huge um, um i still i still would consider myself a photographer rather than videographer i know i know how to do stuff but there's as i said some uh, good friends of mine are videographers and they're, they're great and i would never try to encroach onto their there's a little bit of crossover obviously but i see them as colleagues rather than competition i think that's really yeah. important to say I yeah, and I, and I think that is an important thing that people, you know, do need. And you know, and we've I've spoken about it on on the on the show before. You know, other therapists that do angelic reiki or future life regression or past life regression. You know, all the stuff I do. We're not in competition. We we all we're all there to help each other and boost each other. You know, mm -hmm. and if someone doesn't work with me, but they want to work with someone else, but they're getting the same result, that's brilliant because that's what yeah. we're here. We're we're, we're collaborating. We're working as a collective to help individuals, where, whether the individual uses me or somebody else. It's a collective. We're all here to support each other and help each other. Definitely. I love that. that that's the word I was trying to think of earlier, actually, the collaboration. Uh, I've got this little, I, I keep putting it out on social media. I don't know who wrote it or where it came from, or even if it's accurate. But there's this little thing that I've, I keep saying, and it really does actually resonate with my purpose if you like my attitude towards working with people and that is um a rising tide lifts all the boats in the harbor and and it, and, it, and to me that's i'm doing my bit to help that tide rise because if if, if the tide rises everybody wins if yes. i try and do it myself and protect myself then i'll probably be all right but then everyone else suffers but if everybody wins everybody wins and everybody wins well and i think that that's kind of my attitude at the minute you know, I've got lots of friends in business, lots of friends out of business, but I just want them. I, I got genuinely excited about seeing how well they're doing or, you know, celebrating their wins as well. And I think that's really, really kind of what I'm about now. Yeah. And it's, it's absolutely brilliant that you've, you've actually come to that. You know, you, you've actually, well, you've brought, I mean, everyone always, ha you know, that that's what everyone fundamentally, but it's actually remembering and you've actually, and it's taken sort of like um, some tragedy to actually help you 
find that point and get, and get to that point. Yeah, I, I think you know, obviously, if, if 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 you know there was such a thing as a time machine, or I could go back and all the rest of it, then I would hope oh, that things God, were yeah. different. But at the same time, I can't live the rest of my life without actually making progress or being in a place that is positive and can help people and i think that that's kind of it and it, it, i'll tell you i will say this because i'm not sure if she's watching or not my wife sam i was always used to take the she mickey was out earlier of her. all right she always take the mickey out of her for years yeah you're a bloody do-gooder you're always always trying to help people always do you know <laughs> yeah what goes around comes around, I guess. <laughs> I, I, would, I still would call myself a do-gooder, but I do like to do good. I think that's that's the way I kind of phrase it. I mean, I mean, it's um, yeah, and it's a nice feeling, you know, when people say nice things about you or people recommend you to other businesses, and and um, you know, I think I think it's because I, I don't try the hard sell. I'm not there to sell you. I'm not there to sell you my photography. I'd like you to buy it at some point. <laughs> She is watching. Just see a little messages come up. But, yeah. I, you know, it's I'm very conscious about that, I'm very conscious about selling. And is it, a, you know, one of, I'm in a very good community. Um, uh, I call him, he's a friend, um, but he runs a, 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 it's called Tea with Steve. It's on um, uh, uh, Facebook and he runs a, like a community for it's sort of, it basically is a social media guru if, is in, but he does a lot of this sort of stuff and talks a lot about mindset and mental health and all the rest of it and i've kind of used a lot of his sort of guidance and use a lot of his examples to sort of you know alongside my activities with the strong men because I, I do their i do their social media as well which is a lot of work <laughs> it is a lot of work but i don't mind it because it's it's i'm doing something that's helping them uh, and it's 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 although i don't want to sort of start talking on a sad point but charities like that that are dealing with bereavement there's um, another one um i've recently became aware of holding on letting go which is about children that have had bereavement and you know all of those things i, I think it's um those sorts of charities are going to become yeah. very much more um apparent or oh, there's they, they, gonna a lot of work is going to be needed there's a lot of people that are dealing with unexpected um bereavements at the moment yeah. and it's going to continue for a while as well yeah yeah so, oh, yeah yeah so so it's actually it's it really is brilliant that you've you've kind of like got got to this place where you're collaborating and you're helping people um, you know, and you've and you've got a wonderful family. Um, you, you know, I, I I know I know Sam and the kids and that, and you know, it is an absolutely amazing family. So, as you know, I do guided meditations, angel card readings. So each week, I like to ask my guests whether they would like a mini guided meditation or an angel card for themselves and the people watching. So, Graham. What would you like me to do? <laughs> this is a good one, and this one, and this is gonna. I, I is this is not something I have ever, ever done. And I remember a long time ago, I always said, "Do you know what? I don't believe in all that mumbo jumbo, all that sort of stuff." But, then he meant me. <laughs> but no, no, no. But but all seriousness, I've I've seen the, some of the stuff that you do, and I've seen how people, what people say about you, and the work that you've done, and all the rest of it. And I I guess to a certain extent. I have become a little bit more spiritual and a bit more open to this kind of stuff. So I think I'm going to go for the card reading. Excellent. I like I like that choice. So we're going to do the cards. Um, and as usual, when I do the cards, um, I don't do the cards to predict the future. Um, I do the cards for what we need to know for our highest or for your highest good at this moment in time. Because even though I work with the past, um, to me, when I work with the past, we healing the past so that we can be fully present. And when we go into the future and see the future, we actually know our future is so we can be fully present. So everything I do is for us to be present in the here and now. So that's what the cards always do. So let's just give the cards a quick cleanse of this. So what does Graham and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time? What does Graham and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? X. 
excellent. And it ties in really quite nicely. And in fact, we might even have had this card might even have come out last week, I think. I can't remember, I'll have to check. In the flow, everything is smooth sailing. So, so yeah, so so everything, so so literally, you know, what, what you've been talking about today, you've actually been talking about you're in the flow of life. You, you know, you're flowing along and you're touching the right things, things are coming to the right, you know, and everything is smooth sailing. So continue with what you're doing because, um, you, you, you know, this, this is absolutely brilliant. You're just flowing along now and everything that that needs to be is coming to you at the right time. So it's an absolutely brilliant card to come out for you and cool. for those watching. Cool. I, that's, that's, that's really interesting. I, I just, it, it, it feels about right. It feels right. I am, I do go with the flow a lot. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 which is how, you know, which is what we, is which, which we should do or how we, how we should be because when we go with, with the flow, we, you know everything just is plain sailing it, it it comes to us and you know yeah. where where people have been at home now they've kind of like had to go with the flow mm, very much so and, very and, much so and see so i think yeah, I, that. I think i think it's um it's interesting that is that has come up because i i think that going with the flow but at the same time because of your well, i say because of your but I guess where I am in my mindset at the moment is that you become more receptive about what's going on. So you can see those opportunities, you know, I'm going with the flow, but then things, oh, that looks really interesting. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. And, and it, it's, they're, they're, but they've always been there. It's, you don't necessarily see them. And I think people with don't necessarily have that mindset yet, or they need to find it. They're not seeing the opportunity. They might be still on that flow, but they're not seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah, that's 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 absolutely brilliant. See, you even did your own slight interpretation. Yeah. Of the card as well. oh, I'm trying to have you read. Oh no, what people gonna think of me? They're like, oh, Graham, what's happened to Graham? He's, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> so, Graham, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? I, I think we've kind of covered it, really. I think, I think I just I just want people to find their mojo. I want people to um follow what's right for them i wasn't following that for a very very long time i thought it was right but it wasn't and and then it took a lot of things to happen in between to actually make me realize what was really important to me um you know it wasn't the money it wasn't the big bucks it wasn't all the excitement of the police and all the rest of it it was a lot more inward it's a lot more sort of uh feeling and and um just just being in a good place and i think that that's you know maybe because i'm getting older i don't know but you just feel that you know everything's going so fast and it's slowing it down taking a breath and i think that's again that card is suitable in the sense of everything that's been going on in the world and i think maybe what's going on at the moment with everything i'm not going to say what it is but perhaps people need to take note of that and look at you know look let's fix this but let's fix it in the right way i think that's, yeah you know. yeah absolutely perfect so everyone i hope you've enjoyed this and um, found it insightful and the words of wisdom graham has given you will help you further on your journey so graham if people want to connect with you how do they do that oh well i mean i'm all over the place on social media but i guess where i spend a lot of my time is uh linkedin um I think that um also watching us oh, sorry, i just saw somebody else putting messages up um yeah that yeah, was LinkedIn, uh, i am who i am graham baker um it says that i'm a photographer i do have um studio gb so studio gb graham baker photography um and i also do the, the wedding side which is just graham baker photography not the most original names but that's the best way but i, I guess linkedin would be the best way to contact with me directly um yeah. same with e email would be info i n i n i info at studio gbp.com for one word yeah. um that would be if we wanted to email me and stuff but linkedin i'd, I'd say yeah. i'm on there all the time i've got all the alerts on so i'm always poking around there 
Yeah, and what I do is uh, um, I'll, p I'll post all the links in, into the um, comments anyway um, in, in my final post. So um, they're cool. all there that people just be able to click on it and go straight to, the, straight to your pages. Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so thank you so much, Graham, for being on the show. And of course, if um, you've reached a crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you. Please feel free to reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute video call um, on Messenger or Skype to see how I can help you um, on your journey to take charge of your destiny. And of course, so, um, if you're looking at getting uh, for a chance to get away and learn more about yourself, then I will be running a four day retreat, fingers crossed, in Glastonbury in October. So please feel free to check it out and register your interest. And it'll be an absolutely amazing um, weekend uh, working with uh, Mary Magdalene and St. Germain. And of course, Angel Wings membership community is now open where you get a chance to grow with the Ascended Masters, Angels and Oracle cards to spread your soul, wings and soar. And of course, if you want to sign up to my weekly newsletter on my website to get a free guided meditation and several other free gifts, then please feel free to do that. So thank you again so much for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video, as I'm sure there are more uh, people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny, just like you. And I look forward to you joining me again next, next week, same time, same place, where my guest will be the lovely Liz Violet. So before we go, um, we will just uh, show that Sam has said, uh, okay. Jason said, um, speaking to Sam. See, people are talking to Sam when bypassing you. Just go to show how I'm, 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 I'm used to that. Don't you worry. I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> okay. I I because she does most of the talking. Oh, there you go. All right. So, everyone, again, thank you so much for watching. And, Graham, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your wisdom. It's been absolutely wonderful. No, thank you. It's been, I've, I've actually really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. So, Excellent. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah. Okay, so see you next week. Bye. Cheers. Bye-bye.